The Backyard Barbecuers Mistake Series has officially kicked off. Today we are going to be covering putting too many proteins, too many meats all at once onto your smoker, not rotating your proteins properly. Those are the two topics we're going to be covering. This is Comparison Cooking and we're looking to help backyard beginner barbecuers get to that next level as soon as possible. My name's Kevin and if you want to get better, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Jumping right into it, we are talking about putting all the meats on all at once, right? You get a new smoker, you're excited, you go to the store, you buy steaks, you buy beef, you buy chicken and ribs, and you put it all on at 225. What happens, right? You end up with chewy beef, you get rubbery dried out chicken, and you might get perfect ribs. Let's talk about the reasons that might happen the ways to solve those problems, All right? First, practice getting one protein down, all right? Don't load up your smoker just because you have a new smoker. It's one of the biggest barbecue beginner mistakes I see, all right? They put chicken, they put ribs, and then they put some type of beef on there. From my experience, one normally turns out really good and the rest turns out terrible, especially in the beginning until you really focus and get that one protein down. All right. So now let's talk about how to get to that next level. When you have brisket on and you're cooking at 275, it's good temperature for brisket. Then you throw chicken on. You can smoke chicken at 275, but you run the risk of drying it out or creating rubbery skin. So you're going to have to pivot during that cook at some particular time, all right? When you take the brisket off, you could technically let cook the chicken the entire time for those two hour rest, all right, at a higher temperature. But if you wanna serve the chicken up as an appetizer and you've been smoking it for a little bit with the brisket, you pull the brisket off, you crank up the heat to 350 and you help develop that crispier skin at the end. Now, option number two, your chicken's not quite ready. I should say, your brisket isn't quite ready, so you're gonna keep letting that cook and you're gonna serve the chicken up as an appetizer. What you can do in that scenario is you don't wanna crank your heat up to 350 with your brisket on there, you wanna keep that going. So you can turn on your oven, throw it in there for 15 to 20 minutes at a higher temperature to help finish off your cook and crispen up the chicken. All right. The last thing you want as a beginner is to throw on a ton of meat, spending hundreds of dollars at the store and walking away with mediocre results. So the biggest mistake I see for beginners is loading up their grill, but not having the experience with each protein to get the job done. Let's talk about rotating your proteins, right? So when I started off, I did that exact same thing. I threw everything on there. The chicken was okay. We pretended it was good because I was new at it. The beef was always chewy and the ribs were always perfect. All right, they liked that low and slow and they just turned out great. We ended up having ribs every weekend for a long time. And it went from being my favorite meal for months to being a meal I didn't wanna eat for years. Now I used my sure thing, the rib recipe, because whenever we had guests or I wanted to have a good meal, it was my crutch. I knew I could nail ribs, but I overdid it. I didn't rotate my proteins. I didn't work on the things I wasn't good at because I wanted to use that crutch as a sure thing. I wanted that perfect recipe every single time. That really backfired on me as for years, I really didn't have any taste four ribs. So you want to focus on, you know what, chicken is not my thing, but let me give it a shot this weekend. Brisket's not my thing. Beef chuck's not my thing. Let me try it. Let me get better. If I'd spent time developing those recipes instead of just always defaulting to my sure thing of ribs, I would be better at those other meats way sooner and on my palate still might be ready for ribs. It wouldn't have had to take such a long break of I don't want ribs anymore. So it's extremely important 
to rotate your proteins. With that said, one more cautionary tale. Brisket, full packer brisket. There is nothing better, in my opinion, than going through that cook. All right, the experience of the cook, the look of the brisket, being a full packer, the flat and the point meeting together. That's beautiful. But once I cook it up, I'm normally the only one in my house eating it. So that means after two slices of flat, way too many slices of point, because that's my favorite, I'm kind of brisket, brisketed out by the end of it. So therefore, one day of leftovers is good, but day two, day three, day four, I'm done. Like, I don't want to touch it, and a lot of it ends up in the trash. I know, quite the sin, throwing away brisket. But it does happen because I wasn't doing the right thing, and that's slicing up my brisket into smaller portions. There is nowhere that it says you have to cook a full packer brisket every single time. If you have a smaller family and you're doing practice cooks, by all means, cut down your brisket save those other sections for other cooks in the future. You don't always have to go full pack or brisket because if you do all the time and you stuff your face the following couple days full of brisket, you might also find that you're overdoing it on that protein and that you might fall out of favor that, ugh, I had so much brisket the past couple of weeks. I don't want to cook that thing for months. But if you do smaller portions, you might be better off. Make sure to share this video, Barbecue Beginner Mistakes, in your Facebook groups to help other beginners get to that next level even faster. If you can learn from my mistakes and we can all learn from each other's mistakes, we're going to build a better foundation of barbecue that we can all learn from. And then also make sure to celebrate everybody else's success when they happen. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment of your beginner biggest mistakes you've made over the years. And by all means, make sure to hit that subscribe button. As always, you guys have been awesome and I'll see you real soon.